Arnold Schwarzenegger blasted onto cinema screens in the June of 1996 with his explosive action thriller, Eraser. It sailed through the ratings board in the United States with an R rating, but the film would go on to receive heavy cuts at the hands of the British Board of Film Classification in the United Kingdom, with its secretary James Furman making many changes to the film. In this edition of Cutting Edge, we'll be examining the cuts made to Eraser for its original UK theatrical release, as well as taking a look at the extensive alterations that were later made to the film for its initial home video release. As you'll discover, Eraser would be one of the most heavily censored action films that was ever made available to British consumers. Eraser first came before the BBFC in mid-1996 when it was submitted by Warner Brothers, and James Furman stated that not only would the film need classifying with an 18 rating, but that cuts would also be required, even at the highest category. Around half a minute of footage was removed across three separate reels, with contentious scenes featuring bladed weapons, imitable techniques, and violence against women. The first cuts occurred in the film's first scene, where Johnny is beaten up by two thugs. The uncut version of the scene plays as follows. Fuck you! Stew me quick! Shit, Johnny, but first, Mr. Kennelly wants a little souvenir. Open up! Open up! We're gonna forward this to your buddies in witness protection. See if it sings on its own. They can take it to the trial. Open up, Johnny. Open up! Benny? Hello? For the UK cinema version, Furman demanded... Remove extreme close-up of knife blade near face, and looser shot of knife as mouth is forced open, together with shot of pliers approaching open mouth. Remove medium close shot of Schwarzenegger breaking villain's neck in kitchen. Jenny, but first, Mr. Kennelly wants a little souvenir. They can take it to the trial. Open up, Johnny. Open up! Hello? Two more cuts were made in Reel 5, as Kruger, played by Schwarzenegger, chases after James Kahn's character, Daguerrein, in order to rescue Vanessa Williams' character, Lee. You listen up, John! We're playing my rules now! You mess with me and I'll slice it up and mail it back to you in little pieces, all right? For the UK cinema version, Furman demanded... Remove medium close shot of James Kahn hitting heroin in face with gun. Followed by... On roof of helicopter pad, remove shot of Schwarzenegger breaking man's back and neck. You listen up, John! We're playing my rules now! You mess with me and I'll slice it up and mail it back to you in little pieces, all right? Lee is later held hostage by the Russian villain Petrovsky, and one brief scene where he threatens her in Reel 6 was also deemed unacceptable by the BBFC. The uncut scene plays thus. It looks as if your friend has arrived. I'll enjoy introducing him to you. I doubt I'll have the pleasure. He has forced me to hasten our departure. And yours. For the UK cinema version, Furman stated... When Russian threatens heroin, remove close-up of triangular knife blade in his hand. It 
It looks as if your friend has arrived. I'll enjoy introducing him to you. I doubt I'll have the pleasure. He has forced me to hasten our departure. Following these cuts, Eraser was passed with an 18 rating after 28 seconds of cuts on Monday, August 5th, 1996. The film's theatrical trailer had previously been passed with a PG rating on June 26, following three seconds of cuts. A handful of shots amongst the rapidly edited footage caused issues at the BBFC, who demanded... Reduce intensity and impact of threatened violence, particularly removing sight of woman kicking body on floor, sight of Schwarzenegger shooting two machine guns at camera, and subsequent explosion of police car. Warner Brothers later resubmitted Eraser for a UK video release with a request for a 15 rating, and James Furman was happy to submit to Warner Brothers' request. He demanded a huge amount of cuts to the film, as he felt that the British audiences of the 1990s were turned off by too much violence. Former BBFC examiner Roz Hodgkiss later recalled Furman's ideology in an interview with The Guardian newspaper in 1998. Furman minimally cut the action thriller Eraser for an 18 certificate. On video, he made 43 cuts, including the final scene. He didn't hesitate to change the meaning to make it morally suitable for teenagers. He presented this as a favor to the company. The film flopped, the video did well, ran his argument, because less violence made it palatable to the British audience. The version of Eraser that was submitted to the BBFC for video classification was the full, uncut, R-rated version as released in the United States. With Warner Brothers having requested a 15 rating, the cuts recorded by James Furman on video were far more extensive than those requested for the cinema release. But not everyone at the board agreed with his methods, as former BBFC examiner Maggie Mills once stated in the Sunday Times. Thurman was a control freak who would sit in his office alone, late into the night, obsessively watching videos. His lack of contact with the normal human world showed. He ran the BBFC as his personal fiefdom, overriding those who disagreed with him. To begin with, 13 cuts were requested in the opening scene alone where Johnny is beaten up by the two thugs. The uncut scene plays as follows. You couldn't hide, Johnny. Nobody hides from us. Ah, shit. Benny, get me some ice. I think I broke my goddamn hand. Show, boys. Forward this to your buddies and witness protection. See if it sings on its own. They can take it to the trial. Open up, Johnny. Open up! Benny? Hello? For the 15 version, Furman demanded Remove brutality of opening scene by removing the following Heavy punch to head of bound and gagged man Petrol being doused on floor and unbound and gagged woman lying on floor Medium close up of woman writhing on floor while being doused with petrol Medium close-up of second punch being thrown to head of bound man, and close-up impact of punch to head. Medium close-up of head recoiling, and man looking away, saying, Get me some ice, I think I broke my goddamn hand. 
medium shot of man with petrol can saying, Sure boss. Close above man with noose around neck being lifted up. Extreme close up of knife blade near man's face, followed by his mouth being forced open as pliers come into shot. Medium close up of Heavy's neck being broken behind freezer door. After glass shatters in sitting room, remove sound of Hero breaking Heavy's neck on floor. Little remains in the cut UK version, as this next clip demonstrates. You couldn't hide, Johnny. Nobody hides from us. Johnny. Open up! Hello? Uh. Who the hell are you? Kruger then drags the two dead thugs outside shooting a bullet into each of the two dead bodies to make it appear that the men shot one another as part of his erasing process. <coughs> Berman demanded that this should be reduced to only one gunshot. As Hero shoots at corpses in body bags, remove close-up of gun firing. This change resulted in Kruger's dialogue, which follows, to become nonsensical in the UK version, when he says to Johnny, They killed you, and they turn on each other. Since we only see one man shot in the cut version, this introduces an irritating continuity error. Wait, this doesn't work without an audience. Kruger continues his cleanup operation, placing two more corpses in the living room to stand in for the bodies of Johnny and his wife. Outside, let's go. Even this was too much for Furman, with his cuts list stating, As Hero ignites petrol on floor, cut away to remove sight of flames engulfing corpse. A little while later, our heroine, Lee, is caught trying to dig up some dirt on her corrupt boss, Donahue. He calls Lee to his office, and realizing he has been caught out, Donahue pulls a gun on Lee, but turns the gun on himself instead. I'm working for the FBI, William. They heard everything you just said. They're watching us right now. And you think that makes you safe? You! I have no fucking idea! How could you do this to me? I hope you understand, Lee. You leave me no choice. Roman's cuts issued for the UK version demanded when corporate boss threatens woman with gun, reduce intensity by removing cross cuts between her fear and his loss of control. Remove medium close up of boss pointing gun into his mouth. Remove medium close up of boss slumped in chair with blood coming out of his mouth and shorten medium shot of the same. I'm working for the FBI, William. They heard everything you just said. They're watching us right now. And you think that makes you safe? Get 
you! How could you do this to me? I hope you understand, Lee. You leave me no choice. Kruger, Daguerin, and his men later raid a woodland cabin on the pretense of rescuing Allison, a female witness. But unbeknownst to Kruger, it is all a setup so that Daguerin can kill Allison in order to protect his own hide. Pay close attention to the uncut version of the scene presented here, as its structure will become important in a few moments' time. She's hit. Get an ambulance. Go on. Sorry, honey. We lost her. Furman listed two changes that had to be made to this scene. Remove sequence at top of stairs in which Hero stabs man trapped behind door and shoots second man with bloody impacts. Along with... Remove details of villain suffocating woman by feigning mouth to mouth resuscitation, resuming as Hero revives to see villain looking up with feigned regret. For some reason, Warner Brothers took it upon themselves to drastically re-edit this portion of the film in order to accommodate Furman's cuts. As a result, the music and sound effects flow rather abruptly throughout the scene in the UK version, with frantic cross-cutting between Kruger and Daguerre's individual scenes. The death of Allison is also hugely underplayed, and it is not immediately clear what fate has befallen her. You're late. Get an ambulance. Come on. Sorry, honey. What follows is an example of the same scene that Cutting Edge has created based on James Furman's notes. Why Warner Brothers did not attempt something similar is unknown. But see what you think.
She's had get an ambulance. Come on. Sorry, honey. We lost her. Following the cabin raid, the naive officer Monroe is shot twice by DeGaron on board his jet. Sit down. Did I, uh, did I give you an evaluation yet? Evaluation? Yeah. A plus, kid. Despite its brevity, Furman objected to the incident of violence, stating, As villain shoots young officer, reduce impact shots. Sit down. Did I, uh, did I give you an evaluation yet? Evaluation? Yeah. A plus, kid. Eraser continues without cuts for the next 12 minutes in the UK version, until the scene in the zoo where a bad guy has his arm ripped off by a crocodile. The explicit sight of this was removed for the UK version. Cuts were later made in the Cyrus break-in sequence, where Kruger fights off a SWAT team. The violence once again proved too much for Furman's tastes, however. As Hero pursues SWAT man, remove impact of him pistol whipping SWAT man. Followed by... As SWAT teams start to emerge from lift, remove sight of Hero removing pins from grenades in man's belt and throwing him into lift to blow them all up. two cuts occur a minute or two later, and mirrored those implemented for the UK cinema version. Daguerre's pistol whipping of Lee was once again eliminated, as was the sight of Kruger breaking Haggerty's neck on the helipad. John, we're playing my rules now! You mess with me and I'll slice it up and mail it back to you little pieces, all right? As Eraser moves into its final act, heavy cuts were made by Furman to the film's final 20 minutes. The first removal occurs whilst Lee is held captive by Petrovsky. The uncut material plays as follows. Personally, I'd put a bullet in the head and throw overboard. It would be such a shame. Don't even think about it. Uh. I think what I like and I do what I like. Remove medium shot of Russian guard slapping woman. It would be such a shame. 
Don't even think about it. I think what I like and I do what I like. Kruger makes his appearance a couple of minutes later and takes down two guards who are patrolling the docks. Johnny and his boys follow suit, beating up some other guards who are barring their way onto the docks. Absolutely. For the UK version, Furman demanded, When Hero jumps onto guards on dock, reduce punches and kicks, and after cutting to villain's reaction, remove rifle butt to man's face. Are you threatening us? Absolutely. Nobody screws with the Union. After gaining access to a warehouse, Kruger is forced to hide beneath the floorboards as five more thugs show up. Fate of the Villains is hugely diluted in the UK video version, thanks to Furman's drastic cuts. When Hero fires up through floor of docks, remove sight of first man being riddled with bullets, resuming on longer shot of two men being shot through floor. And immediately afterwards... When Hero fires at two men running from warehouse, remove impact shot of them both being thrown back against shed. Resuming on big close-up of Hero as he fires. Also remove impact shot of third man being shot and thrown back through window. The Tamer UK version plays as follows. Another cut occurs around half a minute later, where Lee is threatened with a knife by Petrovsky. Furman had demanded that the shot of the knife opening be removed for an 18 rating on film, so it naturally had to be removed for the 15 rated video version. Lee escapes a few seconds later, and after felling Petrovsky, she kicks him in the head as he lies on the ground. But this too troubled Furman. Remove sight of woman kicking Russian in head. Kruger emerges from the warehouse, armed with a pair of Syrah's railguns, and blasts away at the many random bad guys waiting for him outside. Amongst the mayhem, Johnny's buddy Sal makes a crack shot and shoots a thug in the eye with a sniper rifle. Cuts to the sequence stated As Hero advances firing, remove group impact shot of three men being thrown into the air, together with gunplay and impacts which follow. Remove close impact shot of bullet in man's face.
Daguerrean takes Lee hostage and threatens Kruger from atop a shipping container. Thanks. Furman also objected to this event too, demanding Remove villain's apparent pistol blow to woman. Thanks. Take it out! Let's go! Now! Despite being shot, Kruger makes a run towards the shipping container as it is hoisted up managing to grab onto it at the last moment. At the same time, Johnny and his boys take out the last of Daguerrean's men, with the uncut version playing thus. However, the intensity and mayhem was too much for Furman, and he demanded more cuts, stating, After Hero jumps up onto container being craned up, reduce gunfire. When Union boys rise up shooting for mechanical dredger, reduce close shots of firing and impact shots on villains. Cuts occur during Kruger and Daguerrean's brawl atop the shipping container. Again, the original uncut scene plays as follows. Remove shots of villain swinging crowbar and hitting hero, as well as repeat of same shortly afterwards. Perhaps the most drastic alteration made to Eraser was in its final scene. As previously mentioned, Furman cut the ending of the film to make it morally suitable for a mid-teen audience. The uncut version shows Johnny driving to Garen and his cohorts onto a railway line before leaving them stranded in the path of an oncoming train. The rather callous scene plays as follows in the uncut version. Yeah? You've just been erased. I consider this to be hugely distasteful and sadistic, removing almost 30 seconds of footage and leaving the fate of the villains completely unseen. His cuts list demanded... In final scene when car is trapped in railway crossing, remove all sight of trapped villains panicking in car as train bears down on them. Car being demolished as satisfied hero looks on and accomplice drives up smiling and wrecked car in smoking ruins of train. The greatly unsatisfying finale plays as follows in the UK version. Yeah? You've just been erased.
They call it a train. With Warner Brothers having made the necessary cuts, a racer was passed with a 15 rating on February 13, 1997, with a staggering 3 minutes and 22 seconds worth of footage having been removed. The film was released in this cut version on VHS and later on DVD. Fast forward to 2009, and Eraser found itself back before the BBFC for a new classification, almost 12 years to the day since it was first classified for video. The BBFC passed the film completely uncut and the film was classified with a 15 rating on February 10th for Strong Violence and Language. Unfortunately, at the time this episode was in production, Warner Brothers had still not released the uncut version of Eraser on DVD or Blu-ray in the United Kingdom. However, fans wishing to savor the full uncut version can import the American Blu-ray disc, which is completely region-free and available for a very reasonable price. One final point worth mentioning is the BBFC's classification of the original teaser trailer for Eraser. It was classified on film on September 27, 1996, almost eight weeks after the film had been granted an 18 rating with cuts. It plays as follows in its original form. He works for a secret government agency. He answers to no one. He is called in when time has run out. To save your life, he must eliminate every trace of your existence. A body may be found, but it won't be yours. Because to protect your future, he will erase your past. Whilst it begins as a dark piece, any tension is quickly alleviated when we realize that the opening scene is a faked setup which serves to provide the audience with both the basic premise of the film and Kruger's job as a witness protection officer. The trailer was classified as being suitable for all audiences in the United States. In the UK, the BBFC passed it with an 18 rating. Their reasoning? The work contains suggestions of sexual assault. And yet people think Americans are prudish. You've just been erased. 